This is episode number six. Joining me in the online studio is Dina Ramadan, a seven-year digital nomad who has been visiting 33 countries so far. Today, she's joining from Cardiff, Wales. She's a digital nomad coach. Her business is actually registered in the UK. She enjoys the freedom digital nomadism gives to explore new places while doing something that she loves. But she reckons that working when everyone, everyone else is having fun isn't the best part. Actually, I agree with you. And it's not only like for digital nomads. <laughs> hey, hello, Dina. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about this podcast. Good, good. Me too. It's, 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 it's fun. It's a very interesting uh, topic. Certainly hot at the moment. Definitely uh, when when uh, we prepared for this uh, episode, I asked you to um, several questions, and one of them was your one recommendation for aspiring digital nomads. And okay. so you said, you said life is short. Go and see the world. It's the best way to spend this lifetime. Don't waste the opportunity. Where does this come from? So this just comes from my own experiences as someone who's always loved traveling and yeah. loved experiencing different cultures and different people and different foods. Um, I've always been one of those people who just go for things. So yeah. for me, it was go for, go for travel, go for having my own business. How can I help people? So how can I spend more time with the people that I really want to spend time with? And then everything just fell to place. Right. You're still quite young compared to me, at least. So what the, <laughs> how old were you when you started traveling like that? So I started traveling like that. I, I used to do long trips in the summer um, mm. since I was a child. My dad used to put me on a, on a plane to Egypt and I had to get escorted by a flight attendant because I was so young. Okay. So um, I've been traveling since I was 12 um, okay. on my own in airports and then spending time with family in Egypt and then exploring different places in Egypt and, and learning. But then um, I started traveling properly full time in um, 2016, 2015, but I was a part time nomad. Then I went mm. into full time nomad um, life in um, 2017. And now I, I have a base, but I travel, I travel quite a lot. Um, and that's the freedom of being a digital nomad. If you want to have a base, you can, you can have a, have a base and travel, or if you want to travel full time, you have that opportunity as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is episode six, uh, all the people I've interviewed before you, they all say that having a base is really, impo really important, not only in terms of, uh, you know, administrative, uh, stuff. Like, well, you need to pay tax somewhere, <laughs> for, in, for instance. Yeah. But also, also in terms of, you know, your family and being able to go back to go back to uh, your base is important because you can, like, reset yourself. That's what that's what they were, what they were saying. Yes. What is a, a, a part-time digital nomad? So, obviously, nomad means free to roam Earth and travel. So right. um, usually when someone thinks digital nomad, you think of a full-time traveler. Um, digital obviously means you have a business online or you work remotely online. So being a part-time digital nomad means that you, you travel when you want and you have that mm. freedom, but then you, you, you have a base. How frequently are you supposed to go back to your base then to be considered a part-time digital nomad? I don't know, maybe... Um, I don't know, four four months of the year, five. So it's like short short trips, come back, yeah, stay when for I a was, while, and go back again. Yeah, when I was a full time a full time digital nomad, I I travelled continuously for for four years, and I didn't go home for okay. two or three years. I, I was just on the road, living in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia. Um, I spent a lot of time in Portugal and, and Greece and Europe and Morocco in Africa. So mm. those like, yeah, so that was me full time traveling. But now I have a base and then I, I come back, I go away, I come back, I go away. 
How long, how long do you go for? Um, last trip I went on was five days. The trip before that, it was six weeks. Okay. All right. So it can, it can really, de- it can really depend, but you're still, you're yeah. still like completely, uh, location independent when it comes to working. Yeah. 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 Right. So I, right. all I need is a computer and then I, um, I talk to my clients online and I help them build their dream business, build their dream life. And yeah, I can do that from anywhere in the world with international people. As long as there's a good internet connection. Yes. It does <laughs> definitely. Morocco doesn't have good internet connections. I had to keep going to five-star hotels to use their internet. Oh, that's, 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 inter- that's interesting because uh, this is an important point to be a uh, location independent is well, okay, fine. You can, but you need the internet connection. So if you cannot, don't have it, go where it is, <laughs> like you say, yeah. five, star, five star hotel. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, you said, you said, uh, 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 we, we come back talking about those little details, which, which, which are really, really important, but I want, I want to continue, um, uh, you know, uh, talking about what you said about, you know, go and see in the world. But on that sentence, you said it's the best way to spend this lifetime. How do you know it is the best way? That's a good point. Uh, it's the best way for me. I've yeah. met a lot of people who the best thing in this life is to spend time with their family yeah. or spend time learning or studying or academia or something. So it depends. But for me, like, and my my tribe, travel is the best way to learn the best way to experience, the best way to understand and know yourself as a, as a person, like know your limits, know your boundaries. It can push Mm. you in good ways and in bad ways. So it it just stretches your comfort zone. Right. What have you discovered about yourself since you started traveling? That I can withstand a lot. So um, when COVID started, I was in Mm. Malaysia. I lived in Malaysia for three months. Um, and that's as long as the visa would last and um, COVID happened and I couldn't leave the country because there were no flights so I ended up in an immigration center waiting for the first flight out of Malaysia so I had to share a room with 30 other women there were no beds I had to sleep on the floor (laughs) (laughs) how long did, long did you have to wait for three months Gee, in the in immigration center, yeah, for three months, yeah, because there were <laughs> oh, wow. no flights, there were no yeah. flights. So I learned yeah. a lot about myself. Yeah. Most of the women couldn't speak um, English. Luckily, after after a while, they put me with English speaking people, so I could communicate and not go completely insane. But so travel isn't always good, but you learn a lot. So I learned mm. a lot about different cultures, different people. I learned a lot about that like there is strength within me um and then just experiencing that I've also experienced the other side where I've seen the most perfect sunsets I've met the most free people I've learned a lot about spirituality Buddhism Hinduism Mm. Islam I've learned a lot about um like how beautiful earth is Mm. if you go to Greece some of the most beautiful beaches and Mm. You just you just want to pinch yourself to make sure that it's real, you know. Yeah, I have a friend who is currently in Albania. Yeah. And he's uh, he's been posting pictures on uh, on Instagram. It's like, whoa! It looks like um, you know, blue 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 uh, sea. You don't you don't you don't know that you're in uh, in Europe. It's really yeah. it really reminds me a lot about about Asia. Um, what you're saying is 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 really interesting. Is that is that why you are? Is that what you? You, you, you coach and teach to your clients? Is that why people come to you? So people come to me because of my experience as a nomad. Yeah. But most of the time, people come to me for my experience as an entrepreneur. Okay. I've, been, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19. I'm now mm. 33, almost 34. So I've been doing entrepreneurship for a long time, working as a freelancer or a business owner. Um, so a lot of people want to come to me and go, how can I have a a business that I can do from anywhere in the world. And then we look at their strengths, abilities, interests, personality, and then we come up with a business together that can give them the freedom to travel or freedom to spend more time with their family or 
freedom to do whatever pursuit they want to do. Right. Okay. So let's go into a little bit more more details then. Um, a digital nomad is someone who is location independent. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you do that full time, part time. You have to be location independent. Yeah. How do people become location independent? The first thing you need to do is either find a remote job or build a remote business that makes you enough income to work and survive. Mm. So that would be the first step. I wouldn't recommend leaving your job and then running a business straight away. I recommend yeah. building it up so then you can you can have an, you have that security and you also are building something that can be a, give you an uncapped earning potential. Yeah. Then you've got to feel really comfortable with a computer. You don't necessarily have to work from home. You could work from cafes, you could work from libraries, you could work from hotels, you can work from anywhere. So being able to work on a computer is important. Some people come to me and say, I don't want to work on a computer, but I want to be location independent. So mm. then um, I've helped people um, start up dog training businesses where they where they have appointments that they go to to teach people how to look after their dogs and the rest of the time they're free to do whatever they want. Mm. So it's not necessarily digital, but um, it's understanding what you can do that you're passionate about that can make you money and you can work in the way that you want to work. Do, have you met a lot of digital nomads who are not entrepreneurs? They they like they, they work for someone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Especially since COVID. Okay, so more more and more people like that. So how yeah. do you? Because this is this is new, right? Uh, this uh, this remote working location being location independent. So there are a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of corporate, maybe more, uh, who are not used to to it. So how do you convince your boss to let you work remotely? You go to say, hey, bye. I'm gonna, hey, boss. I'm gonna go like you know, six months <laughs> on, a, on a trip, but I will still be working. And your boss will be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I actually have um, a blog post on my website, digitalnomad.coach, mm -hmm. um, that I say show show your boss, and then maybe this can start the conversation of working remotely. So. Okay there are resources on my website for people if they're interested. Um, I would also say if you really want to work remotely, do it protect professionally and think of the benefits for the, for the employer. So mm. maybe you can, if you work in marketing or business development, you could go to another country and source new clients in a new demographic. So that could be a benefit for your employer. If you're a copywriter, you might get lots of, um, like inspiration from a new country. Um, do a presentation for your boss so then you can tell them, look, I really want to work remotely. I know how this can work. This is my proposal. What are your thoughts? Please come back to me in three to five working days. But luckily, we, we also live in a time after COVID where a lot of people work from home and work on mm. teams. So there are there are ways that you can be location independent. You just yeah. need to you need to think about it strategically. What would yeah. make them like you working remotely? It's a it's a great point. And uh, I think another very important aspect I would I would add is uh, if you decide to travel, make sure also that you're really aware of the time differences, because for instance. You know, if you have this uh, weekly progress meeting every Monday morning at 9 or 10 a.m., you live in the UK, but then you're going to travel in Southeast Asia. You know, 10 a.m. in Southeast Asia is uh, 4 or 5 p.m. So yeah. make sure that you are available at that at that time for the for the weekly progress progress meeting. And depending depending on where you are, it could also be like uh, at night <laughs> or during, yeah. you know, at, at times so like 2 or 3 a.m., 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, and that... A lot of people may not necessarily realize realize that. What what do you what do you see like a, as the the main challenges for for people who come who come and see you? So the main challenges that people have are limiting beliefs and right. not believing that they can do it. 
So I get onto a lot of sales calls with people and then they say, oh, I really want to live this life. This is my dream. But then there's something within them that makes them say, I can't do it or I, I can't mm. I can't make this investment in myself. Um, so that would probably be the biggest struggle that I meet. Usually when people decide that they want to do this, they take it seriously and they they communicate what they want and then they're willing to give it a go because they've got accountability so the right. hardest part is believing in yourself why do you think is that because are they afraid of anything yeah i think they're afraid of failure they're they believe that maybe they're not techy enough even though you definitely don't need to be techy to run an online business depending True. on the business um yeah. They also um, they also think that it might be it might be a waste of money. They can do it on their own, mm. but then they come back to me after a month or two, and then they go, "I would like your help now." Mm. Um, so yeah, there are there are various reasons, and it's up to people to realize how much life how much life is short, and if they don't try, they'll never get. Yeah, is it also could it be also because they've never traveled that heavily before? Yeah, yeah. So I also do a course for people who want to solo travel for the first time. Right. Um, and a lot of people are afraid that if they go to a, a new country, they won't know what to expect, or is it safe, or um, where should they go first? So I, I do meet a lot of people who who want that, but that's. That's only a few sessions people need. Mm. If you want to start up a business, you need three months to start up mm. um, something. So how do you solve a question like, or a problem in that case, like wh wh where should I go first? So I find out where they're from. Um, and maybe because America is big, maybe it's the other side of America. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's um, another coming to Europe and going to Greece, which is a really safe country, or Spain or Portugal or even the UK. Um, oh, another problem that people face is visas. So mm -hmm. if they don't have um, a good or strong passport, not, not necessarily good or bad, um, they, um, they might struggle or have to pay fees to visit um, certain countries. Right. I was asking the question because um, what I what I uh, I've learned throughout interviewing you know, digital nomads like yourself is that you don't necessarily have to travel overseas. But this is what you say. No, you know, if you live yeah. in the US, you can go to the other side of the US, <laughs> and you can yeah. still be a digital. You can still be a digital nomad within your own country, which is a little bit which is a little bit safer. Yeah. Right. Starting with things you know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. Hmm. So. Um, we talk about you know how to be how to be like a location or to become location independent. Now, once you are okay with being location independent, how to work while traveling? You started we started talking a little bit about it. You know, be careful about the internet connection. Uh, you said earlier on it's not it's not fun. Uh, well, sorry, this is a recommendation that you gave me. It's 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 not fun, you know. Your other people will have will you will have to work while other people are, are having fun, and you're going to have to deal with that. So, how to work while traveling while being location independent? So, for me, I have a five hour window every day, okay. where um, in the in the afternoon um, or evening, depending on if I'm in Asia or Europe. And in the mornings, I go on hikes and I have a nice breakfast and I go and enjoy myself. And in the evenings after work, I go and enjoy myself. Mm. Um, and then I have a five hour window to work um, every day. So that would be that's kind of my routine to make sure that I have a good work life balance. But then other people, they might prefer working in the morning or they might prefer working in the evening. So then we figure out how they can do that. Obviously, if they have meetings with other people, um, they have to take that into consideration as well. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is that you are scheduling your work time around your, your leisure time. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't do everything. I can't. Um, I can't. I have to work. But mm. I, I make sure that I, um, I, I, 
you know, I work when I'm most productive and make mm. sure it's when my clients can can discuss or um, they want to be coached. Right. Reach out, reach out, reach out to you. Yeah. But, you know, working only five hours a day, can you make a living out of it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I only work with 10 clients a month. Okay. So that's between six and 10 hours of calls that I do a week, mm. which I can do very easily. And then obviously I have to answer emails every day and, and write blog posts for my blog and mm. I have to do sales calls. So it, it evens out that I can do five hours mm. a day, four days a week. So it means you're very aware of how much you need to be able to live the life that you want. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So do you have a budget? Um, my budget varies, but okay. I, I've, I found a way to make an income that makes me more money than I spend. So that's really good. Um, I also have property that I rent, rent out. So I don't have to, um, that that's an extra bit of income for me. I also yeah. have an e-commerce store, which I started recently so I can start learning more about passive incomes. Right. So, you know, I, the way that I make money is I have so many different things to help me make sure that I, I reach my income mm. um, level. Mm. So you've been able, you, you, you've built passive incomes, property living yeah. from rent is already passive income, but that was coming for your life before becoming a, a digital traveler. A digital no, 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 no. Right, so okay. I, I've, I've been a coach for nine, 10 years. Okay. I've been a nomad for seven years. Um, and so coaching was my first income. Okay. And then I, I figured no. out different ways that I could make more income, which I, I help people with if they decide to work with me. Uh, in, that's interesting. So did you buy properties in the UK or in uh, countries you visited? Buy in the UK, yeah. So the home base. Yeah. Why Which is the why UK? I need to come back to the UK more frequently these days. Right. Right. And so this is why your business is registered also. Yeah. This is where you pay your tax. You pay your taxes, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why why the UK? Could you have chosen another country? Um, because I have the support of my family here. So if I'm abroad and I need something done urgently, they can um they can help. While if it was I did I did think about buying property in Bulgaria because you can buy a flat in Bansko, which is a digital nomad hub, for thirty thousand euros, which mm. is <laughs> which is amazing in comparison. Yeah. But um, and I do have connections in Bulgaria who could maybe help me. Yeah. But I thought learn the market first, where I where I know the market. That's clever because some, something happens, you go back, to, you you go back, you can't travel for whatever reason anymore, like COVID. Go back, yeah. go back to your base, and you're safe. You got, you still have some some money money coming. Yeah. Um, but one thing is interesting is um, being a digital nomad. You cannot buy as a as a foreigner. You cannot buy properties uh, in uh, in uh, many countries in the world. I mean, they are, they, you're gonna have like limitations, unless yeah. unless you you uh, have a deal with a local local person, or there are like a digital uh, more and more digital nomad nomad locations. Uh, that will allow you to do so. Now, a point about you know this this podcast is um, is sponsored by Medical for Nomads, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, healthcare insurance, all of this stuff. While you are a digital nomad, what what do you recommend to your to your clients? So I'm a bit biased because I'm um, an ambassador for Safety Wing. Yeah, we don't want to know about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can't, I can't really help you because I know, I know that your client is. Sure, but um, but in terms, in terms of just in terms of get, staying, staying, you know, a little bit general, why, why is it, why is it important to cover yourself? Because anything can happen. Any, you know, if you get ill and well, or you and you know you pass away or something like that, um, you want to make sure that you, you're, you're covered financially and to make sure that you're safe yeah could you have taken an insurance from the uk so i i've 
I, I use um, a, a nomad insurance so I can travel to various countries and continue traveling freely. Um, I, you know, I do also have a travel insurance with my bank, but then mm. I can only be insured for 30, up to 30 days. You know, if I want to make a claim with them, I have to make sure that it's a short trip. While if I do longer trips, then I rely on my, um, my digital nomad medical insurance or travel insurance. What is the worst thing that happened that happened to you? I told you. Um, oh yeah, Malaysia. Sorry, no, no, no. Malaysia, sorry. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But that was the worst thing. What is the best thing that happened that happened to you? Oh, I would say hiking in the jungle in Thailand, okay. and then um, we we reached a tribe, mm. and the tribe gave us a place to sleep, and. There was no light. Everything was candlelight and fire. Mm. And they cooked for us and they they shared songs with us and they couldn't really speak English. So everything was like us trying to communicate together. And it felt very like minimalist and tribal. And it yeah. was a, an amazing experience. I really connected to, you know, evolution. Mm. When was it? This was in 2014. Wow. I always remember it, yeah. Wow, that's that's a, quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most of the time when I've traveled recently, I, you know, as a digital nomad, I need good Wi-Fi. Um, hmm. So I stay in, in cities or towns. So it's, it's more built up. But for me, staying with a tribe where they had no electricity... Mm. But it's just magical. I understand. All right. So before we um, close this this interview, is there anything else that you would like to uh, to say for you know aspiring digital nomads? Do some research. Figure out where you want to go in this vast earth, mm. and build something that makes you really excited and something that you want to talk about all the time and that you're passionate about. And then go and live your best life. Life is too short to not live your best life. All right. Concluding this episode like we open it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Full circle. Full exactly. Circle. Ex exactly. <laughs> okay, Dina, one last question. How can people contact you? So if you want to contact me, it's very easy. My website is digitalnomad.coach. So www.digitalnomad.coach. And yeah, uh, you can book in a call with me. Um, we'll chat for 30 minutes. I can give you a taster of coaching. And, and then if you decide to work with me, we can see if we're a good match. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time today. No worries. Thanks for having me. I've had fun. And that's the wrap for today, Destiny for Nomads episode. I hope you found it very valuable and helpful in your own journey towards location independence. Don't forget to tune in next time for more inspiring stories like Dina. Until then, subscribe to your to the podcast, sorry, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.